Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And um, just a couple of announcements. First of all, the Curious About COVID workshops continue on. Those are free to non-members. And our COVID courses for members start next week, Lose the COVID-25 and Lessons from COVID-19. And I'm doing some interesting things with that Lessons from COVID-19 workshop. We're doing things like understanding basic virology and what about mutations and variants and um, I think there's a lot of misinformation going around that makes people pretty nervous that we can take care of by presenting facts. And, um, and then what to do about it. Like, what if you get COVID? What are you going to do? And uh, what should the rest of the family do? And all that kind of stuff, right? What are your risk factors? So we have that going on. And then don't forget, summer semester is happening soon. Um, we have, uh, if you're thinking of careers with us, um, you can start any time, but there are a couple of courses that start with the semester, so you might want to time it that way. Um, so send me an email at pampopper at msn.com if you're interested. And then remember, every Thursday at noon, I do a conference call for people who are interested in Make Americans Free Again. And if you want to join that conference call and learn what we're doing and how you can get involved and help our efforts, then just once again, my email is pampopper at msn.com. All right, so I started this series on grief and grieving, which um, I was asked to do by some different people and getting good response from it. So um, we, I'm just gonna go on. I have a couple more videos, I think, that touch on this topic. And let's face it, as much as the science is interesting, and by the way, a lot of the science I share in the newsletter in written form with references, you know, that sort of thing. So that's always interesting and it's my first love. Uh, but having said that, there's a whole other human element to this that I don't think we can avoid talking about, all right? So, um, you know, we covered numbness followed by pain and then guilt and regret and second guessing. And I think you have to process all that stuff in some kind of an order before you can go on to the next thing. And before we get into the next thing, I just wanna qualify once again, that I am not a therapist, so I'm not giving advice. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts based on my experience both prior to this and going through this, just like all the rest of you have, trying to figure out what the heck's going on and what to do about it, right? So I think the next thing that happens is anger. And I've sensed some of that anger in some of the emails that you've sent to me. You're ticked off at what's happened with some of your relationships. And Anger is actually a good temporary thing. And many people might not think it's a good thing at all, but I don't think you can avoid it. And when I realized that I actually could experience anger and let it go, I think that was like a great big moment for me. Um, the first thing is that anger in the right way that you experience it, not in being mad at the world, not in using it to justify anything you wanna do, but in actually processing and letting yourself recognize that there are some ways that are appropriate to treat people and other things that are inappropriate and understanding that difference is a big step in growing up. It sure as heck was for me, right? So um, I was angry when this started um, and, and, and I think everybody was. I'm angry at the government. I'm angry at some of the people who cooperate and that sort of thing. But the difference is I don't take it out on everybody anymore. And I don't use it to justify self-destructive behavior anymore. I just, for lack of a better way to put it, when it happened last year, I just sort of noticed it. Like, you're kind of mad about all this stuff, right? But here's the best part. Like I said earlier, I let it go. Because it's not feeling angry about something that is a problem. It's staying angry and um, for long periods of time. And I know from experience, because I did that in the past, and it didn't hurt anybody but me. You know, if you stay angry long enough, it just becomes a very self-destructive internal thing. And it doesn't change anybody's behavior. Like one of the things that you might have noticed, and I certainly did, is when you're angry, it's not like other people notice and say, oh gosh, I guess she's angry. Maybe we'll change our mind about, you know, what we're going to do in terms of church policy, or maybe I'll change my mind about what I think about certain things about what are going on right now, what's going on right now, because I don't want my friend to be mad at me, right? So it doesn't change anything. It just changes you for the worse. It sort of did me. Well, I'm going to come back to anger, but I think that closely related to that, and I felt this last year a lot, is disappointment. I've been disappointed by a lot of people in a lot of situations in my life. I think everybody has, if you lived past the age of 20 or 25, Let's face it, sometimes people are disappointing. But um, you know, here's something else. I really don't think most of it's intentional. 
And I even go back to some of the stuff that happened in my family. I don't think my family sat up at night talking to each other, trying to figure out how to mess things up for anybody. I mean, I'm not the only person they hurt. They hurt a lot of people actually with their behavior. And I don't think that that was intentional. It doesn't mean it's okay. It just means that it makes me less angry about it. So, you know, um, some of the people that you're frustrated with, um, you know, who, I'm not talking about the people behind this, by the way, I'm talking about the people in your life that you're actually interacting with who um, have disconnected with you from you or, you know, a church or organization that you've clearly had a falling out with. I don't think that the people that this happened with got up in the morning one day and said, you know what, today I'm going to see so-and-so and and I'm going to do everything I can to aggravate this person so that I never see her or him again. Unintentional. And I don't think really there is any happier about this than you are or I am. And um, maybe they don't realize it now, but they we'll realize it when the dust finally settles. And I'll go go again back to my family. I don't think anybody in my family was happy about the way things were. They certainly weren't happy about the way things were with me. And um, that takes a little bit of the edge off. But um, I wanna talk about disappointment in a different way. And that is that um, a lot of times we're disappointed because we have unrealistic expectations. And One of my uh, unrealistic expectations that I had to get over is that things, um, I I, I liked things the same, you know, and it's not the way that things work. I mean, nothing in life is static. Things don't stay the same and that we should be grateful for that because in my own case, if I'd stayed the same, I wouldn't be talking to you today about this because I would have killed myself a long time ago with food and alcohol and and self-destructive behavior. The way the world works is that everything changes or nothing changes. And I don't think any of us would like the nothing changes type of thing going on. So thus we're experiencing an accelerated change right now. That's what makes it so important. It's not like it's fun when it's one thing at a time, but when it's a whole lot of people and a whole big chunk of your life or your entire life being turned upside down, that's when the change is absolutely the most uncomfortable. So um, you know, gradual change is more comfortable, but here's a newsflash. We don't always get to decide the time and the method of change. We sometimes just have to decide at the time that we're going to get through it and we're going to do it in a positive way. So once the anger and the disappointment and the resistance to change is out of the way, you can start looking at situations like this a little bit more objectively and critically and see things a little bit differently. I did, and I'll tell you what I think, I was thinking about this when I was getting ready to make this video. Like what was a defining moment when I just sort of settled down and dug in and said, time to get to work, you know, roll up my sleeves and do something. It was when I had this realization, this is an amazing time to be alive. And all things considered, I think I would not have wanted to miss it. And um, that's an entirely different thing than feeling angry and sad and mad and disappointed and all that sort of thing. It's like, I just want to observe this and, and see what is happening and what's happening to me. And, um, it, you know, it, it, I just shifted the focus to observing it and then responding to it instead of reacting to it, which is a whole different thing. And so part of that was going out, making new connections, forming new groups. If you can't find a group, form a group. That's what I teach people to do every Thursday at my Make Americans free call at noon. Um, You know, there's nothing worse than feeling helpless and feeling stuck. And so doing something about it moves you out of that rut and, and into forward motion. And it almost always makes people feel better instantaneously when they start the process. And of course, you all know what happened next. We started the Make Americans Free Again organization. And um, interestingly enough, you know, all the things that had dropped out, it's like the the bottom dropped out of a certain portion of my life and it just went away. And then there was this void for a period of time. Of course, what would be great is if everything dropped out and the void got filled at the same time. So you wouldn't have that period of God awfulness, right? But that doesn't work that way. But over time, everything that got lost got replaced only better. And what I mean by better is that I'm a different person with a different set of convictions right now. 
um, and, and much more front and center about what I think and, uh, uh, and the way I believe about things. And I'm not necessarily looking for people who agree with me. I've always thought that's a pretty boring life, but I'm looking for tolerant people. And I've realized that the trait that I can't stand in people is lack of tolerance. And so um, there are people who aren't necessarily all on board with everything I say, but they're willing to have a conversation about it. That's okay. There are some people who are wildly enthusiastic about the things that I say. They can join my group and be more active. But the point is that a new tribe of people, I mentioned this last week that you become a different kind of person and then you have to bring people into your life that are more like the different kind of person you've become. The old me was a different person. Not, I mean, not at, at, you know, at the core, but um, I've, I've, I've evolved the change that I was talking about. So I've evolved to need a different tribe in many ways, and that's what I found. So, so I think that you know, just, just you have to process this. And I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm impatient. You know, what I like is to take action and make things better. And so the, the process of transitioning things and, um, and, and allowing yourself to feel miserable because you sometimes there's nothing you can do to make it better right away. It's, it's tedious and it's long and it's not comfortable, but there's just no other way to move through it. So you feel numb and you feel pain and you feel anger and you feel resentment and resistance and disappointment and all of those things. I think you just have to observe what you're thinking and feeling and then move on. Like I said, I'm not a therapist, but I've gone through all of this. And um, uh, I guess I've been my own therapist in the last few years, particularly just um, navigating, being observant of things and figuring out how to come out the other end of whatever the thing is um, better than I was before it started. And, um, and so I know you're going through the same things. It's not easy. But I think if you start to think about it in this way, it gets easier over time. So uh, thanks so much for watching. My email address once more is pamcopper at msn.com. And uh, you can pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you on um, uh, tomorrow uh, with more news. Remember, Monday is newsletter, Wednesday and Friday, different platforms. So you got to subscribe to that stuff in order to get it. Okay. And it's different flavor of uh, material. Uh, than what I talk about on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, all right. Thanks for watching. I'll be back to you tomorrow.